Hello and welcome to On That If I Want To. I'm Andrea Mowry of Drea Renee Knits and this is where I try my best to answer some of your questions. Today I am wearing the Weekender which is one of my most worn knits. This is my, I like to call it my fancy sweatshirt because it is as comfortable as a sweatshirt but you could totally wear it to the office and I just love it. So this one is my I'm trying to remember the yarn colorway name. This is Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. They're marls. And this one is the newspaper colorway. I actually originally knit this one without any sleeves. I just left the sleeves off because the drop shoulder comes down to like a short sleeve length. And then winter came <laughs> and I added sleeves. But uh, originally, I think you can still see my project page on Ravelry um, shows it without any sleeves, which is kind of fun. So, and I'm also wearing this cute little bandana for any of my sewist friends out there. If you are not familiar with, this is from my friend Meg at Slow Good Studios, and they sell some beautiful hand-painted and printed fabrics. And they actually also, for my non-sewist friends, they actually have a couple of ready-to-wear items too. They do a really cute duster and, and another, it's a collared shirt that they called the over shirt. Um, so there's a little something for everybody. But anyways, I just love this little bandana. So, all right, let's jump into some questions. I really love knitting cables and usually pre-blocked, the cables look nicely defined and puffy. But after blocking by soaking, shaping, and then laying flat, the cables lose their definition and are rather flat. Do you have any suggestions for remedying this or tips for future cable projects? So the main thing that comes to mind for me is how many plies does your yarn have? Because a good rule of thumb for cables is that you want to use a yarn that has three or more plies because Three or more plies means that the round, yarn itself is going to be rounder. So the more plies, the rounder the yarn, which is going to create better stitch definition for something like cables. So definitely pay attention to how many plies your yarn has. Another thought I had is fiber content. Are you using a drapey yarn that wants to open up after blocking and like hang? Or are you using maybe a more rustic kind of wooly yarn that has some memory and bounce back? Because I think if it were me and I was looking for like really squishy cabled fabric, I would want to use a yarn that has some of that memory quality that can kind of bounce back and be nice and squishy. Maybe even, I was gonna say a woolen spun. I love the air that's trapped in a woolen spun yarn. Um, this is a woolen spun yarn, but that does mean that the yarn itself doesn't show stitch definition quite as well. <laughs> um, I still think they can do cables beautifully, but just, just working this out in my head as I go. Um, but yeah, look for a three or more ply yarn and consider using a non super wash kind of woolly yarn that has some bounce back to it. And when you're blocking it, try not to overstretch it. That was the only other thing I kind of thought of. I mean, the great thing about blocking cables, especially if it's something like a sweater, is generally in between our cables, there will be negative space. And a lot of times that's reverse stockinette, sometimes it's garter, but it's usually a backdrop that helps those cables kind of push forward and act more 3D. Um, so with pre-blocking, a lot of times those areas kind of recess back like ribbing, but with blocking, that's what helps open it up so you can really see the cables and also so that it hangs nicely on our body wherever we may be wearing it. Um, so I definitely find that blocking for cables is essential in my opinion. But yeah, I think maybe paying attention to those plies and using a woolier yarn, maybe avoiding something with too much drape in it. Um, and maybe staying away from like a two ply yarn because I find that that can be a little bit flatter. Next question. I just finished a sweater with big, bold stripes using a super wash DK. One of the colors, a red, bled onto the natural colored stripe and another lighter colored stripe. 
I soaked it in cool water and even used a color catcher to block it. And the water was pretty clear when I squeezed it out. Do you have any suggestions on how to get the red splotches out of the lighter colors and how to avoid colors bleeding in the future? So you did everything right in regards to how you blocked the sweater. You threw in a color catcher, you used cooler water. And I think the color catcher actually did its job if your water ran clear when you squeezed it out because that color catcher grabbed it up. The problem is your lighter color yarns also grabbed up some of that dye. So I do think red is definitely, red colorways tend to be the biggest culprits when it comes to bleeding. So I would always be careful with red. And if I was using red in the future, I personally would do a little sample. I like to just do a little swatch. Some people will even just snip the yarn, but I like to do something a little bit bigger than that. Um, so a little bit of a swatch and soak it just the same way you're planning to do that sweater and see if any color bleeding occurs in the swatch, I think is a nice place to start. Um, unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to get that dye out of those lighter colored yarns. The way I would attempt to fix it would be to over dye it. So I think that's gonna be your best option as far as fixing your sweater that you already knit. So I would go get some, if it were me, I would just go get some RIT dye and in a color you like and try over dyeing and you're still gonna see some differences in color because you're over dyeing three different colors and I think it could actually turn out really neat and look really nice. Um, but that's kind of where I would start with that sweater you've already finished. And then in the future, I would be a little bit wary of mixing red yarns with lighter colored yarns without checking to make sure that that color bleeding is not going to happen. Um, I think also there's a greater chance, I have a memory <laughs> of somebody telling me that there's a greater chance of an undyed yarn soaking up color from a dyed yarn than if it had maybe just been like two different colors of dyed yarn um, because there's been no treatment on that undyed yarn to seal in any color. And so it's also kind of primed to accept color. I feel like somebody told me that once, like one of my dyer friends, but <laughs> I don't think I'm making it up. Um, so yeah, that might be an extra be careful if you're going to pair it with an undyed yarn. Hope that all made sense. Okay, next question. I'm wondering about gauge. Isn't everyone? If I need to go up or down a needle size, how does this affect the meterage or yardage of yarn required for the garment? Essentially, will using larger or smaller needles mean I need more or less yarn? So, not if you're hitting gauge. If you're hitting the gauge called for in the pattern, then you should be pretty accurate as far as using the amount called for in the pattern um, because you're knitting the same size stitches and the same weight yarn, I'm assuming, that the pattern calls for. So your, your meterage or yardage should be pretty spot on to that. Now, if you are... How I did so that is how I originally read this question, and I'm like, oh, maybe you're thinking if you were just gonna make up your own pattern and you knit it on smaller or larger needles, would that affect how much yarn you need? And it would, but I didn't think about that yet, and I don't have an answer off the top of my head because I'm thinking about that. I'm like, okay, if you knit tighter, then you're gonna have a denser fabric which is gonna use up more yarn. But if you knit looser, you have bigger stitches, but you'll need less stitches. I gotta think about that one for a minute. I feel like the tighter you knit, the denser the fabric, the more yarn you need. But I can't promise that that's right. Ah, I didn't read that question that way ahead of time. So if that's how you were asking it, my apologies. I don't have a clear question or clear answer. I'm sure somebody else will chime in with what they think. Um, so that's a good question. I'm going to think about that. All right. But in the other sense, if you're just trying to hit gauge on a pattern, if you hit gauge and you're using the same yarn weight, then you should 
use about the same amount of yardage or meterage. The only thing that's going to really affect that, um, that would kind of throw a wild card in there, is if you're using woolen spun versus worsted because a woolen spun yarn has air in it and so it weighs less than the same amount of yardage of a worsted spun, which doesn't have any air in it, so it's a heavier yarn. Okay, I'm gonna keep going now before I confuse people. <laughs> All right, question number four. My question is regarding socks. Wait a minute. I think this is an old question. No, it's not. Never mind. We're good. We're good. Ignore me. I threw myself off. I'm gonna get under water. Okay. Start fresh. Question four. <laughs> if I edited my videos, this would be a perfect, just splice this in over that. Okay. My question is regarding socks. While I follow the patterns, length of the foot minus five or six centimeters to allow for the toes, they seem to elongate with time and end up loose on my feet. Is it blocking? Is it the yarn? Is it measurements? Thank you in advance for considering my question and for any answer you may have. So there is some good information in this question because it sounds to me like this is has happened a few times for you. And so I think right there you already have an answer for you, which is knit those socks shorter because they're stretching out somehow, whether it be your gauge or an issue with the pattern or the blocking, whatever it is, they are ending up too long on you. So you need to knit them shorter. And so I would look at a pair of socks you have made and worn and kind of get a feel for how much shorter you would like them to be, maybe by shaving off one to two extra centimeters. Um, and just do that and trust that they are then going to stretch to where you need it. I like to knit my socks with up to an inch of negative ease. Um, Sorry, I just had a number of thoughts all at the same time. So I do think that fiber content can affect this for sure. If you are using a yarn that doesn't have as much memory, that just wants to stretch a bit more. I mean, definitely I've had it happen to me. So you're not alone in it. And that's why I think I knit my ribbed, I thought I had a pair right here, my ribbed sucks. I think I do actually. Am I mending? Nope. Yep, I do. It's not even necessary for me to show you this, but I got fixated. So that's why I knit these socks so much. These are DRK everyday socks. And I do find that the ribbing helps me combat that where they just tend to feel like a great fit because it's hugging my foot. Like its natural tendency is to pull in. Um, but I would rather definitely have one to two centimeters of negative ease so that my foot can stretch out the sock and it can fit kind of similar to a ready to wear sock. Like if you think about ready to wear socks and you look at them, they're usually a couple inches shorter than our actual foot or um, many centimeters shorter. So, I'm just making sure I answered all the questions. Is it the blocking? Is it the yarn? Is it the measurements? I doubt it's your blocking. Uh, you could try sock blockers. And because then like for mine, those are for my size feet. So that is going to stretch it to my size. Um, but I only ever use those once. And then I just, after I wash these, I just hang them like this to dry. I was like, why is this in my mending basket? Now I see that there's like this little tiny area that's starting to get thin. There's not a hole yet, but you can see where the hole is going to happen when it happens. So I'm like, I think I'm just going to duplicate stitch over that to reinforce it now. Uh, but yeah, that's what I would do is I would just say it could be any combination of those things. But to me, if it's happening to you consistently, then I would look at your socks and decide how much shorter you wish they were in the foot length to get a better fit. And I would just start knitting them that much shorter as you go and see how that goes. And then I would write that measurement down as one of your magic numbers in your knitting notebook. So, you know, going forward with socks, okay, I need to shave off this little bit of extra length in the foot. Okay. Another sock question. I recently knit your curio socks as my second pair of socks ever, and I love the fun stripes. 
I knit the first sock and it was too big. So I decided to knit the next size down. That fit was better. So I knit a third to match the second and that one came out smaller. My gauge must have tightened up between the second and third sock. I don't feel like knitting up a fourth sock right now, so I'm wearing the second and third together since they are close enough. Do you have any tips for getting consistent gauge between socks? So you are not alone in this. I am notorious for having one sock tighter than the other. I think for me, I actually loosen up on the second sock. So it's like the first sock, a lot of times I'm designing a new sock or I'm using a different yarn than I've used before. So I think I just am overthinking it and I knit a little bit tighter. But once I've done the first sock, I relax because I know it worked <laughs> and everything turned out great. And I usually take notes of like, okay, this is when I stopped the foot, you know, I stopped it on row 60 here. And so now I know this is where I start my heel. And so I'm just kind of a little more relaxed and my gauge loosens up. So a lot of my socks have one tighter than the other. <laughs> uh, but my tip for that, because that can happen with any project we're doing. I see it a lot in sweaters where people's gauge can change throughout a sweater because it's a bigger project. And depending on what we're feeling that day, if we're watching a movie while we knit, what's happening in that movie? Did it make us feel tense or relaxed? Like our gauge can definitely change. So my best tip is to just check your gauge as you go. So I would get, let's say you did a gauge swatch. I would, I always like to measure my gauge swatches pre and post blocking so that I can check my pre-blocked stage stage gauge stitch gauge is what I was probably trying to say throughout the pattern knowing that it matches the unblocked swatch so that I will achieve the proper gauge in the blocked swatch if that all makes sense so just checking it every once in a while so that you stay consistent because I also think if you start to overthink it that's when we can accidentally like tighten up or loosen up too much because we're overcompensating so Sorry, that's not like the most fun answer, but that's what I would do. Or you'll just be like me and always have one sock that's a little looser and one that's a little tighter because I swear it happens to me almost every time. All right, that is all the questions for this week. I finished up kind of quick. This is a shorter one. I'm like, do I have anything else to share with you? I don't have any new show and tells. My orchid here does is about to bloom again which is exciting. See these new little buds? Uh, but yeah, I guess that's all I've got. I'm like looking over on my swatch wall, nothing new over there. So sorry, I don't have anything else new to share with y'all this week. Um, March to May Knit Along is coming. I will still be on my leave for a bit of March, but uh, the knit along is still going forward and it's going to be great. I love the March to May knit along. I love seeing what all y'all make. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, that'll all be coming firstly to the newsletter. It's the best place to get all the information for that. So sign up for the newsletter if you're not already. And I guess that's just it this week. So sorry, it's a bit of a shorter one. I should have picked another question. I didn't realize I was going to get through those so quick. But I hope that y'all have a great weekend. I hope you get to do some making. And I hope to see you back here next week. Bye.